I have sometimes been asked questions about how you can modify the shape of this heel and it is possible by adding extra short rows. So this is how I would tackle it. I'm beginning at the end of the first side of the heel, but it can be done on either side, depending on which direction you're going and which side you think needs additional rows. The 70% heel opening should give you plenty of depth, but there are many kinds of feet and heights of arches. So on the side where we're gathering more stitches into our short row, we knit one additional stitch, borrow, wrap and repark a stitch. And I'm going to work three more rows before I start putting some extra short rows in. So having worked four rows on the increasing side of the heel, I've got eight stitches on my needle. I started with four, did four rows, I now have eight. So I'm going to pop in an additional short row before I complete the next pair of rows. So I've decided I'm going to make my short row um, two stitches sooner than we, we would have done normally. So I'm going to knit until two stitches remain on my working needle, borrow, wrap, replace. Then I'm going to turn and do the same thing in the other direction. Four. There's my two stitches left. Borrow, wrap, replace. So I've actually put two rows in over that central section. Now I'm going to go back and complete the pair of rows that I would have normally done. And being garter stitch, we don't have to do anything with the wraps. They just blend right in to the background stitch pattern. There's my last stitch of this row. Here's my additional stitch. And then I borrow and wrap the one beyond and repark him. So I'll turn the work around and complete a regular wrong side row. Don't forget to snuggle up the corners. We just ignore the short row wrap as we go over the top and it will blend right in. So I'm going to Take my additional stitch, borrow, wrap, repark, turn the work around. So squeezed in there is this little partial short row, adding more fullness. You probably wouldn't want more than two or four additional rows. So I would definitely stagger them and in a real life heel I would do maybe two ordinary pairs of rows before I made my next bonus short row. But because I only have a tiny sample I'm going to make another pair of bonus rows. So I'm going to stick to the same principle as before. I'm going to work until I'm two stitches before the end of this needle. Borrow, wrap, replace, and the same at the other end. Two stitches before the end of the working needle. Borrow, wrap, replace. And now I'm going to complete the rest of the heel as normal. Completed the pair of rows after our, our second set of short rows or bonus short rows and I now have two stitches left on either parking needle and that tells me I've got two rows to go.
but you can see the difference in the length of this side of the heel as compared to the first side. So I wouldn't make my extra rows right near the, the end of the heel. I'd wait till I was part way up and maybe, and maybe put one or two or maybe three of those pairs of short rows. So each time you do that, you're adding two additional rows. So there's our first bonus row and there's our second bonus row. And you want to avoid having them change direction at the same place directly above the previous one, which is why if you always go to two or three stitches from your normal turning position, each row it will be in a different place. All that remains now is to finish it as shown in part two.